at the uh, Digital Life Show with Jack Bacconi. Jack is a photographer that uh, has used the X100 and now using the X Pro One. Absolutely. Jack has an amazing um, body of work and what is it, sort of eight conflict areas in ten years or something that you've been through? Yeah, yeah, eight, eight was um, several of them many times over, over ten years and then the odd conflict here and there after I got off the tennis circuit. <laughs> <laughs> still alive, a bit, bit kind of loopy but still here. <laughs> and what, um, what inspired you, what photographers have inspired you in, in initially to, to get into photography? Over, over the years, well initially actually the very first one was Cardio Bresson um, who I picked up one of his books in a library while I was doing an economics assignment and went oh my god my life has just changed I have to do this um, because his pictures were just so poetical and so lyrical and so full of humanity that, that it just felt like the thing I had to do so I said goodbye to economics. <laughs> Hello Cardio Bresson. Um, after that, um, it got a little bit more sophisticated. Robert Frank, um, Kadelka, um, Leonard Freed. More recently, I like photographers like Echinopoulos, mm -hmm. who's with Magnum, mm -hmm. who's just extraordinary, you know, in terms of the complexity and the laidness of his images. Um, and, and what is it about these photographers? Because, you know, the more photographers that uh, I guess I connect with personally, um, you seem to shoot from the heart rather than... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think... I think I always I always feel that you can see a photographer's emotional character or personality in their photographs. Like I can often see people who I know personally as photographers. I see their personality in the pictures as well, or at least a reflection of it. You know, if someone's tortured and dark and twisted, you know, you see these dark photographs that follows. You know, and, and um, full of pathos. And and if someone's funny and humorous and has a droll sense of humor, I see it coming out in their photographs. And you, I mean, you're lecturing at, at Griffith University with some, you know, obviously masters and PhD students. Is that, um, you know, do you see their work change through the course after you've been yeah, with uh, them for some time and, and grow as photographers? Or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, it's an evolution. Um, you don't see it over like one semester, 13 weeks, but uh, over two years, if I have the same students in three or four different subjects, you, you see them evolving slowly. But I, I, I personally think you can teach people about photography, um, but you can't teach them how to be photographers. And that's that's coming from, yeah, being on the academic side of the fence, but then also being a practitioner for almost 30 years now. So, um, but you can inform them and then, and then they have to teach themselves by doing it. And do you initially, when you you know people present you work, do you see something within every photographer, or do you suddenly there's a little no, diamond in the no. sand that goes bang? You're like, wow, this person's really on. No, something. no, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's not in an every, everybody. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a language. And some people some people have a raw ability for it, and it's there, and you can guide them and nurture it and develop it. But and other people just don't have it. You know, it's like. It's like, you know, um, some people have an ability for languages, some, some people mm. can study classical Greek, but, but others wouldn't be able to string yeah. three words together. It's a, yeah. bit, it's a bit like that, yeah. So your, um, your kit now is made up, I think, of what, probably two X Pro One bodies and what, three lenses. Is that working for you, obviously, compared to what you were shooting? Oh, absolutely, or? yeah. My, my, my DSLR um, kit uh, has practically become redundant and and may may so. I mean what I love what I love about working with an X one hundred and an X Pro One is is actually the psychology of it. If if you're out shooting on the street or doing documentary stuff like I do or photojournalism or feature stuff, people don't react to you and the camera. Mm. Um, you know, the, the problem with a DSLR, apart from the backache of carrying it around, is that when you put that house brick up to your mm. up to your face, you make a statement, and and people react to it, and, and straight away there are these psychological walls that go up mm. that then you have to try and bring down as a photographer. With, with the X Pro One or the X One Hundred, it's it's so understated. It's such a classic design. It's it's actually a beautiful piece of design in a retro um, way um, that people just ignore you. And I and, and I actually want to be ignored when I'm making pictures in in public with people. Mm. Mm. Um, it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful well, camera. It, it's I, mean, certainly, I, I, I think uh, I think my DS, in your work. I think my DSLRs are going to be retired. Um, mm. I mean, I'm not saying I, I won't use them again, but um, I'd say for very specific purposes only, 
I'd say these cameras are it's going to be solely my new new way Fabulous. of shooting. I feel I feel inspired about this camera. It's an amazing camera, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Jack, for your mm -hmm. time and. Um...